Hey, party people, and welcome to season, another Picky Eaters edition. Today, we've got yet another challenge. I'm being told by people in the building that this guy doesn't like, he doesn't like any kind of vegetable, like, like none whatsoever. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. I'm a grown up. All right, without further ado, let's bring this childish ass nigga. Excuse me. Let's bring in our special guest for today's segment. Come on in, man. Look, I brought it here, but I don't know what you want me to do with it. So I just have a couple questions for you. First, how dare you? Second of all, what the f is wrong with you? Respectfully. <laughs> Nothing's wrong with me. I'm good. The, the things on the table, not so much. This is from God. You know, a lot of things are from God. Yeah. Don't mean it's good. You know what I mean? God knows what I mean. So if you see him on the dating apps, <laughs> don't eat vegetables. Like, I don't know how we're Look, gonna get around Don't it. worry, ladies. I'll take you out to a nice vegetable spot. I won't eat it, but you will. First off, there's like ground stuff at the bottom of the carrots. Asparagus, it's gonna make my pee smell. This is a prime example of how life is not fair. I wake up and have a green kale smoothie every morning with just kale and orange juice. Why? This <laughs> weighs less than me. I'm fat and I eat vegetables. The world, nothing is fair. Who drinks, nothing is fair. Who drinks kale in the morning? Me, oh, because oh I like to be regular. Ah, uh, you might got me there. <laughs> so we're gonna try to put something together for you to make you regular. Well, look, I don't like trying new things, but I trust you. You one of those people too, okay. All right, I appreciate it. Yep. All right. See you in a minute. So today for our friend, uh, Jeff, who does not eat anything that grows out of the ground and his insides probably look like the back of an 84 Buick. We're gonna make pork belly fresh rolls. So the whole idea behind this dish is a play on pork chops and applesauce or any kind of stone fruit. They pair really well together. So I'm gonna start off by making this really delicious Asian pear sauce. It's got a lot of good ingredients, so we're just gonna get started on this. So I hate pears, I cannot stand them. But there is something about an Asian pear. It's like Fuji apple and a regular old pear got together, had a one night stand and had this beautiful baby and these things are delicious. So we're gonna create a sauce out of it. We have two of them that have already been skinned, rough chopped and cored. So I'm gonna do uh, one additional one. So we don't need the skin for anything, but you know, so I'm just gonna take the rest of our skin off. We're gonna cut all the flesh away. We are gonna save our cores cause that is going to be a part of our pork belly portion, but we'll get to that a little later. I'll show you guys that trick later. Alrighty. So we've got our three uh, skin chopped and cored Asian pears. We're gonna dump those into our pressure cooker and then we're gonna follow that up with a little mirin some unseasoned rice vinegar, a little pinch of salt, some beautiful organic brown sugar. I mean, everything brown is better. Look at this, they look like little brown diamonds and jewels. And then we've got a little vanilla, couple dashes of soy sauce. We've got some Chinese five spice, so there's cinnamon, there's clove, there's anise, there's a lot of good things going on in here, so we're gonna add that, and then some granulated white sugar, and then we have a lemon. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll the lemon like this, putting a lot of pressure on the cutting board. What that does is release the juices before we go to juice it a little later. So I'm gonna first take the zest from this lemon. Whatever you do, do not grate your hand. I'm just gonna slice that in half and we're gonna use all the juice. Alrighty, so all the kids are in the pool. Only thing left to do now. The only thing left to do now is to put our lid on our pressure cooker, set it to high and let it cook for 20 minutes. So let's move on to the next step. Now we're about to make the main ingredient that I'm sure has Jeff's arteries all clogged and everything, but hey, we're gonna clog them up some more. This is our pork belly. So we're gonna get started with our boiling water here and I got a couple of ingredients to add to it. So I have our pear cores, cause you know, hardly anything goes to waste with any of my recipes. So we're gonna use our pear cores, place that in the boiling water, no splash. We've got some soy sauce. 
We've got some more Chinese five spice, uh, some culture salt. And give this a good stir. So now the pork belly. We've got two and a half pound pork belly here. So I'm just gonna score it. And scoring is a fancy word for just cutting slits in it. So this also allows flavor to be imparted into and permeate throughout the pork belly. It also prevents the pork belly from curling up. It's for flavor and it's for shape. Just gonna do it rough. So for the skin side, we wanna make sure that we pierce the skin. So make sure you're cutting all the way through until you reach some, some fat or some actual meat itself. And then this is our score pork belly. One thing I forgot, you wanna use the peel of one orange. We're gonna give our braising liquid one last stir. Then we're gonna carefully place our pork belly in the boiling water away from us just in case there's a splash, but we did it carefully so there's no splash at all. So we're gonna let this boil and brace off for 30 to 40 minutes, again, depending on the intensity of your flame or your stove top, your oven and your flame. This is the tenderizing portion. So we wanna tenderize this, we wanna braise it down, and then we're gonna crisp it up afterwards. Let's move on to the next step. All right, so our pork belly is braised off. It's boiled, smells amazing. This does not look too appetizing. We're just going to line a plate with some paper towels. It doesn't have to be bone dry, but we wanna pat as much of the moisture off of this thing as we can, because we are going to throw this in our second gadget for today. You know, everybody's always asking, well, what can I do with the pressure cooker? Why does everybody have an Instant Pot? Why does everybody have an air fryer? What can I do with an air fryer? So I'm gonna teach you guys how to use both today. We've already used our pressure cooker for our Asian pear sauce, and then we're gonna use our air fryer for number one, our pork belly, and then number two, that's coming later. I would say this thing is pretty dry. There's no drippage. I'm gonna take the tray of our air fryer here. I'm just gonna place our pork belly in there. And we're just gonna set this to high and let it air fry for anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes until it gets nice and crispy and fatty and unctuous and delicious. And I can't wait. So let's set that and move on to the next step. All right, so our Asian pear sauce is all pressure cooked up. It's nice and hot. I'm just gonna remove the lid. It's perfect. It almost smells like Christmas. So I'm just gonna take an immersion blender. If you don't have an immersion blender, that's fine. You can just dump this into a regular blender. It works the exact same way. All right, that looks good. It's nice and smooth for the most part. It's saucy, but it's still a little liquidy. So we're gonna transfer this to a pan, a saucepan, doesn't really matter what you use. We just wanna let this reduce until it's nice and thick. So we're just gonna let this reduce while we assemble our fresh roast. So now is one of my favorite parts of cooking anything. It's our assembly. We have everything laid out. I don't know what it is about this, but it makes me feel like a kid, like I'm playing in Play-Doh or something like that. We're gonna get started. We have some nice rice paper here and this looks and feels like a sheet of plastic, but it's not. And when you put it in water, it's like a magic trick, things happen. We're gonna place our rice paper directly in the water. We're gonna submerge it all the way. And we're gonna keep our fingers in there. Keep just spinning it around until it's pliable. So anywhere from 10 to 20 seconds, but you want to make sure you keep your eyes, hands, ears, feet, everything in tune with it so you don't over soak them. So this is starting to feel like a fresh roll wrap. It's been about 10 seconds. I'm not feeling any plastic anymore. Alrighty, so this I think is a good time to take it out. So as you can see, it's really pliable. The sides are starting to stick together. So I'm gonna lay this out flat while it still is pliable. And this is why I like to use a wooden cutting board because it sticks and you can stretch it out again. So it's flat for the most part, doesn't have to be perfect. It's gonna get rolled up anyway. So we're gonna start with a couple pieces of this delicious pork belly that we made earlier. So we're gonna start in the lower thirds here. And then I'm using the pork as a vehicle to kind of hide and enhance all the veggies that we're gonna put in here because after all, they are fresh rolls. And again, if Jeff likes them, great. If he doesn't, <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. 
We're going to move over to some of our roasted asparagus. And then we have some thinly shaved red cabbage here. And then we're gonna follow that up with a little shredded carrot. Then we're going to put a couple of baby mint leaves and one of my favorites as always, cilantro. Okay, so we're gonna take the end tightly and as slowly as possible. I'm gonna roll it tight, 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 tight. And there we have it, a perfect fresh pork belly roll. We're gonna add our Asian pear sauce to this. It's gonna be incredible. And if Jeff doesn't like it, that's his problem because these are bomb. It is time for our taste test with our special picky eater today, Jeff, whose insides are very, very close. Come on out. Thanks for having me. Thank you for cooking my meal. Hopefully my insides will be better off after this. Warning, there are some vegetables in here. Interesting. There are some ones that you hate in here. Dope. But I prepared them in a way that hopefully will enhance the flavor for you for your specific palate and you'll like them. We'll see. So let's get to the taste test. So these are these are rice paper rolls. Okay. So I don't know if you've ever had fresh rolls. They're rice paper rolls. They're not deep fried. They're not like egg rolls. My rice like has butter and sugar and is in a bowl. It's never come in the form of Ziploc baggies. This one has the most pork belly in it since you are a carnivore. So True. I would start with that piece right there and take a big bite. Yeah. All right, we out here. Mm. Um, mm. Look like a, it's not bad. A lot of crunchiness to it. I feel a leaf or two, a little bit of grass. There's like a main parade in here. I like it, it looks cute, but like. It's the vegetables for you. Mm -hmm. It's the vegetables for me, for sure. If I fill the rice wrap with pork belly, and then you dip that in the sauce, that, that's your speed. Oh, we gonna be eating good. <laughs> when I got to the asparagus part, the crunch kind of threw me off and I could taste the earthiness. I mean, uh, but I'm gonna eat again. Well, I appreciate your open-mindedness and we got, he, he said he liked it. So that was contrary to what I thought was gonna happen. Hopefully he will finish that one roll. And hopefully my mom is watching because she can never say I haven't done it anymore. I can see myself making this dinner for a girl. Okay, yeah. You know, so she could eat it and then I'll eat pizza after the dinner. Or just eat a, a plate full of pork belly. True, true, true. All right, 